We've been in a series called Irresistible, and uh, we've been talking about uh, the irresistible, irresistibility of community and the irresistibility of Christ and how he draws us. Our theme passage has been found in John 12 and 32. Just scribble it down. It's, and Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men or mankind unto me. So he's always drawing us. That's why we love that, that theme or that series, Irresistible. And really, as God sent Jesus, what he did was bestow his irresistible love on us by doing that. Because we are undone, we're imperfect. You're going to hear that throughout the course of the sermon today, how we are always in need of God's love. So today is irresistible love. And to do that, I want to go to the book of Jude. If you'll go to the book of Jude, there's only one chapter. And uh, so it's a, it's a short uh, book. It's got 25 verses in it. But I want to just expand on what Jude kind of lays out when it comes to the love of God. Jude uh, writes this little, but it's a stern epistle. It's a stern letter. And it's uh, only that one chapter. And, and if you don't know who Jude was, Jude, uh, we believe, is the brother of James, which would make him the half-brother of Jesus. James mentions it, but um, or the, the Word of God mentions that James is, but it never mentions that Jude is. And Jude, we don't think, would have ever mentioned it just out of his own humility. So he's writing this, this um, letter to people, and Jude initially wanted to write his letter as a word of encouragement. You'll see that here in a moment about salvation, but he was detoured, and he wrote most of the, the epistle of Jude out of uh, irritation. He was aggravated. And uh, he was outraged. And you may be like, well, you're talking about irresistible love. How, how can you, you know, uh, co- relate those two words, aggravation and irritability and outrage over this epistle? And it was more like um, uh, one of those tough loves is how I see this book and how it's written. Some people, they were buying into new things and new doctrines. And Jude gets upset because they were contrary to the cross which is where Jesus died for us and and went to the grave, came back and rose victorious. We just celebrated that. But all of that new teaching was contrary to the cross. And sometimes something new can come along and people can follow without really knowing the depths of love that is in it. And and in Jude 1, uh, or in Jude verse number 3, Jude says this, Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share, but now I find that I must write about something else. So it's that shift. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about something else. And he said, I'm going to urge you to defend the faith. So that's a powerful line right there because he's saying we've got to fight for what we believe is the cross and the love of God. He said, God has entrusted us once and for all time to this holy people that we defend our faith. Judy, he switches not too long later, just in verse number 20, you're going to find that while he writes most of the book out of aggravation and irritation, he switches his aggression from a firm tone to a loving tone in verse 20. And this is where I'm going to take all of my thoughts out of today in these next two verses. And he went from correction or tough love to an encouragement to stay in love with God. Write that down right there. Stay in love with God. Jude Chapter 1, verse 20 through 21, it reads like this in New King James, because I like how the language says, it says, but you, beloved, there's the shift. He's been aggravated up to this point, and I'll take you back to some of those in a moment. But he says, you, beloved, building yourselves up. We talked about building last week, building and bettering our community. He said, build yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Check it out right here, verse 21. Keep yourselves up. In the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. That's my first point. Keep yourself in God's love. Now, the best way that I can describe or a quick little story that I can describe keeping yourself in God's love is just jot this down. It's not up there, but it's something for you to go back and read. And you're going to want to read this Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. If you've never heard the story of the prodigal son, it kind of goes like this. There was two sons. The younger son went to the father. Jesus was telling this story about uh, this particular scenario. And he said he went to the father and he asked for his inheritance 
And the father cashed it out. He gave him all of his inheritance. He wanted to leave the father. He says he went into a faraway land and he just began to spin and he lived recklessly and, and, and he just kind of un, uh, untethered himself from the father's love and forgot about all of that and just blew his whole inheritance. It wasn't long after that that he would find himself so broke and so decimated and so beat down that he would be eating with the pigs in a hog trough. And, and the Bible says he came to himself. He had to get things figured out. He said, why am I eating with the pigs when I can go back to the father and, and live better there as a servant than I am out here? So after he blew all of that, and you know what had to be going on in his head, here's what happened. He began his return trek, and somewhere along the line, you know, I believe the father was looking out for him every day in this story. And then one day he saw him coming over the hill, maybe the sun was going down in my mind and it cast a long shadow and you know how we are with our kids we can identify our kids uh, if they're coming a long way off and know who they are and run to them but the father was there with open arms to receive him back into his love the father was there to receive him regardless of his failure and this lets me know that there is no doubt what God what 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 the scripture is telling us here is a depiction of God's love for us that the same thing that he's showing us through the prodigal. He loves us no matter what. He wants to keep you, but you have to want to be kept. You have to want to be in the father's love. There's no doubt the father wanted his son back and him standing there waiting for his son is a depiction of that love. You know, we have banners up all over our campus here and it, they just say, welcome home. And, and I know that we put those up to welcome people to new hope and welcome people in, into a community. But the deepest part of our motive from those banners is, can happen right in your home today. It's really welcome home to the loving arms of God. Welcome home, keep yourself. So if you haven't felt loved or haven't, you, you felt distant, welcome home to the loving arms of God. And if you have felt that, then the encouragement here is to keep yourself in that love. You see, keeping yourself in God's love doesn't mean to get yourself in a place where you think God will love you more. You don't have to get yourself to a place where God will love you more. He loves you just like you are right now. God loves you unconditionally. If you've never heard that, you have to hear that. If God's love came with conditions on getting yourself in a better place before you come back home, then it means that God's love would be flawed. And there is no flaw in God's love. There are no conditions on God's love. He wants all who will come to him. And he's open, he's got his arms open and ready to receive you. I want, I want you to look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 through 19. It says this, and so we know and rely. Just say that right there in your home. Say that with me here, uh, pastors and team. We know and rely on the love God has for us because God is love. Whoever lives in love, lives in God's love or lives in God and God in them. It says, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Check out, I, I like this. This is a great verse for us in the times we are living in. Verse number 18, there is no fear in love. When you are kept in God's love and you keep yourself in God's love, there is no fear. You know, we, we breathe out fear. We breathe out resentment and anxiety and depression. So if you're kept in God's love, we don't have to fear. But perfect love, the scripture says, drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. You know, that's what fear does. It punishes us. It says the one who fears is not made perfect in love. So if you've been more fearful than you have been hopeful of who God is in these times, then, then you need to just kind of do an assessment right now and say, wait a minute, I have more fear than I have hope. I have more fear than I have love. I have more, more fear and anxiety and depression right now than, than I have the, the sense of opportunity and community. I, I need to be built up in that because it says the one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Now the idea here in this passage 
that we know and rely is keeping yourself in that place where you can receive the benefits of God. When you keep in the love of God, you receive benefits. When the son left, he got an initial benefit. It was like, oh man, the father must really love me, but I'm out of here. And then when he blew it all, he didn't think the benefits, the benefit package would run out because he blew it all and he was just gonna go back and be the servant. But you know, that's the love of God. I'm here with my arms open and it's this if you never left. Yeah, there's some things we're gonna have to get straightened out, but my son is what the scripture says. He's come home. You get the best meal ready. You get a robe and put it around him. Put rings on his finger as a sign that the love is still there. And we have to understand by staying in the love of God, there are benefits that come along with that by keeping yourself in God's love. I want you to picture this with me because this is a true story about my wife and I. Uh, we've been doing a lot of hiking and uh, I've been walking and hiking more than ever. And, and, but at the same time, if anybody can identify or agree with me, I've been eating more than ever as well during this season. So I, I'm trying to find some balance here. If I could just stop eating more and, and do more hiking and walking, then I would look chiseled and ripped. But uh, anyway, that's beside the fact. We've been doing, we've been doing a lot of hiking and we lo- that's what we love about being in California. We have an app on our phone called All Trails and we hit a lot of trails. There are certain trails and there are valleys in those trails. And as we are hiking, I'm talking about staying in God's love and enjoying benefits. As we're hiking, we can be in a shadowy place on one side of the valley. Say on the north side of the valley, we're hiking and it's cool out. It's either getting close to the evening or it's early in the morning. And Tina, she hates being cold. She can't stand it. And on the south side, she can see the sunshine. And all of a sudden, she, she starts hoofing it. And I said, where are you going, girl? She's like, I'm going to the south side where the sun is at. And she'll just say, please, whatever you do, take the trail that just keeps me in the sun. Because, see, we have the option to be in the sun or in the shadows. We have the option to put an umbrella up and block the sun from getting on us. And I want you to hear this. This is my point about the Father's love. You have the option to keep yourself in the Father's love or walk away from it to the shadows. You have to want to be in the sunlight. You gotta want to be in his love. God can't resist loving you, but you can resist loving him. If we keep ourselves in the sunshine, then God says there are benefits for you. You know, that's where I'm finding peace in this moment. And I hope everybody finds peace in this moment. The Bible, there's a benefit that says that peace passes all of our understanding. I I, I love it. He gives us joy for strength. He blesses us with abundant blessings. There are principles and foundations that we can live by in God during these uncertain times because for some it's really difficult some are being blessed for the most people I I get it you may not be working you may not getting paycheck Uh, you you may you may have you know really struggling with all the kids being at home and you're trying to you know educate them and, and and be a teacher and all of this stuff comes in but I'm telling you by being kept in God's love he he gives us calm in all of this and you could actually be blessed in this season of uncertainty with friends and family and healing those are the benefits of God's love it's important for us to rely and know experts tell us that a that a child for him or her to thrive they need to know the love of a parent the love of mother the love of father they need the touch they need the affirmation they need the correction They need the teaching. They need to know that we care. And then in return, they distribute that back when they know it. They may not, may not be able to articulate it yet, but it's when they come running to you, they just know inside of their heart that they are loved. It's what John said. We know and we rely on that love because we believe in that love. All you have to do is believe in the love of God. The minute you doubt that love, then the Bible says that uh, something happens and we stop growing. Our flesh takes over and we stop growing spiritually. The same in our physical. If moms and dads don't give love to their children, it'll stunt their growth. And a child's mental health and growth will be stunted without knowing love and affection. The same way our spiritual growth can be stunted if we don't realize and know and rely on his love. We can resist his love and suffer consequences. That's what happened to the prodigal. The consequences were he wound up in a hog trough and he knew at least to go back 
to where the father was, but he didn't expect the result of the father. And that's who God is. You know, Judas was loved by Jesus and he had it in his heart. Uh, and he walked with Jesus as one of the disciples, but he would betray him for 30 pieces of silver. And then he couldn't even live with the guilt. He never made it back to the father's love. And Jesus knew that this would happen. And Jesus, Judas went out and he hanged himself over that torment that he felt from Satan. It never, the love of God and the love of Jesus never ceased to exist. It was all in his mind and in his heart that this is what was going to happen. On the other hand, the, the disciple that Jesus loved was John. He called him John the Beloved and uh, he laid his head on Jesus' chest during the Last Supper and he stayed with him through the cross and he walked with Jesus' mother and Jesus would look down at him and say, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold John, your son. And you could see that love being built up. John was the only disciple that wasn't martyred. He would go on to write uh, what is to come in the book of Revelation as he was uh, exiled on an island called Patmos and so he was loved he was an intimate connection with God and he received you know those benefits of hearing from God because he stayed close to the father the consequence of out of love is being in the shadows where it's cold where it's dark being out of love we can feel lost and disoriented notice those two words being out of love being out of the sun, we can feel lost and disoriented. Staying in love means that at times when we feel lost, we at least, we know that the Father is near. I remember in our previous work of ministry, uh, we had the benefit of traveling to so many places and meeting so many people. And our girls were uh, able to travel with us and we, we took them on a lot of trips and I would alternate, you know, which one would fly overseas with me and I would take them to different places. And, and when we would get out of the car and walk into the airport terminal, I would look at one of the girls, whether we were with the family or I was with them, I would say, okay, girls, I'm talking about being lost and disoriented here. I would say, okay, girls, I'm gonna, pull my bag, you've got your bag, and I'm going to let you lead. You take us through TSA, you get to choose the line, you get to read the signs and see which gate we are supposed to be at. You lead, you make the decision, which ticketing line, I mean, all of it's up to you. And I would just follow along and I could see that they're really nervous. And I mean, uh, you know, I train them how to be good travelers. You want to get my girls fired up? I call them when they make a mistake, like you forgot your passport and we're five miles down the road and we got to turn back and get a passport. I look at them and I'll say, that's a rookie traveler right there. And they get fired up when you tell them they are rookie travelers because I raised them to try to be decent travelers. Okay. So I, I would walk in and I would just be quiet and I would watch them take the lead. I would watch them make wrong turns. I would watch them and get in wrong lanes. I would watch them misreading a sign, but I would also watch them and notice this right here. I'm talking about keeping in God's love. I would also notice them when they realized that they were lost. They would always turn to me and say, help me, daddy, because they knew the father was near. When we're lost and disoriented, all you got to do is say, help me, father, because he's near you. They knew he was nearby. They stayed close to the father's wisdom. The girls would be like, they, they could lead, but they always knew they had the backup. I love them far too much to let them go too far that would cost us dearly, a missed flight or something crazy that we would have to, you know, pay for, pay for more tickets. I, I loved them too much to go too far one way. And then I would start drawing them back in and then let them kind of, kind of take over again and, and, and kind of make decisions on how to get there because they knew the father was near and they could always say, help me father. Psalm 103 verse 10 through 13 in the New Living Translation, it says, he does not punish us for all our sins, he does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward, uh, for, toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19 says, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, 
how long, how high, how deep his love is for you. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. I can't fully understand why he invites me back in when I'm, I'm lost and disoriented, but he does. And the scripture says, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Praise God. Keep in the Father's love. He loves you. Come back to him. Can we just give God a hand clap of praise right now in your home, in your sanctuary? Say thank you. Just say those words. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for your love. Here's the second thing. You build yourself up in God's love. So you keep in God's love. Then you build yourself up in God's love. Jude 1 and 20, let's go back. It says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith. So it takes our faith to build ourselves up. We say that we can build our faith and we can grow in God if we are experiencing him serving and connected. We do what Jesus did. Jesus came to serve. So we feel like we build ourselves up in faith by connecting to others. That's why we love these connect groups that are online right now. If we can help you find one, that, that's what it's all about to us. I think we are now between, uh, we're, on, we're nearing 200 people in our online connect groups and we just say praise God for that because we, we know that's how we build ourselves up in the holy faith. These people that will encourage us. Growing and building yourself up, sometimes it takes a harsh reminder to learn things. Anybody ever been there before? We, we learn by failing. We learn by making a mistake. We learn by taking a wrong turn and you gotta, you gotta grab the girls and say, no, 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 back over here. This is terminal A, not terminal B. And they're harsh reminders. You ever get a harsh reminder and you didn't do it again? Maybe it cost you something. Maybe it hurt. Maybe, maybe you did something. You ever give your kids a harsh reminder so they wouldn't do something again? I know that I have. And uh, sometimes we need harsh reminders and harsh reminders, they can build us up. When we make some mistakes, I, I don't wanna make that mistake again. Maybe you're living in some mistakes and maybe we need to pause and learn from some of the mistakes we're living in right now and say, God, I, I gotta stop doing those things because those are tearing me down, not building me up. You know, our, our kids would reach for things. And in our house, when we had, all of our girls were uh, two years apart and they're 27, 25, soon to be 23 and 17 right now, and in our house, they would reach for things because that's what kids do. They, they go to plugs. And this was before, this is long, long before they made the little plasticky safety things. And they would stick their fingers in plugs. You've been there, mom and dad. And you come around the corner and you freak out and you give them a harsh reminder because they're reaching for that plug or they, they reach up to the stove that's on and, uh, and, and they're reaching for a pot or a pan. And, and it's a harsh reminder. And man, if I saw that, I would take that hand, agree or disagree with me. They all turned out pretty good. I had two of them leading worship today and one of them works at a, a Bible college. And, and so they're doing all right. One works in our kids' ministry. So please don't come down to me too hard on me for this. I would pull that hand away. I would spat that hand, give a little sting on that hand. You know why? Because they needed a harsh reminder not to do that. Brooke, my stubborn child, uh, she reached for a hot a pan of, of soup one day, pulled it on her arm, and we were on our way to the ER. It was interesting to watch her after that. She was just little. It was interesting to watch her because she would go back to that stove again, and she's like, nope, I don't want anything to do with that. She learned something. It built her up. I'm not reaching for that anymore because she had to heal from blisters. And sometimes we get harsh reminders. We tried to remind her, but her punishment for not listening was severe. And sometimes God kind of interrupts and says, let me build you up before you go too far. Let me help you out before you make a mistake that, that may be really hard to recover from. And I know that's a simple example of what I just said, but we need those harsh reminders on a, on a regular basis. And Jude, he, he's talking to us in this whole book. He's aggravated because we've let some things in. We've reached for some things. There were leaders and people reaching for things that they shouldn't have been reaching for. Jude 1 through 1, uh, uh, one chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. I know I keep saying 1, but it's just one chapter. It says this, though you already know this, you already know this. He said, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later those who did not, but later destroyed those who did not believe. Now notice that. I'm going to tell you about three groups of people here real quickly before we come to a conclusion. 
says, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt and then destroyed those who did not believe. If you want to read the reference, some references on that, how angry God got in Numbers chapter 14. He would tell people, follow me. He would show them miracles. He would do amazing things. And they just wouldn't follow. The verse goes on. It says, and the angels. Here's the second group of people. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling. It says, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. And in a similar, a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns. They gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. And it says in Jude, they serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. They walked out of God's love. They they would have known it because God offered to spare Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels didn't have to get kicked out of it. There are three groups of people that are mentioned here. Group one was the children of Israel. He said, I'm going to remind you, you were in bondage. I want to remind you that I did miracles to save you. I want to remind you that I was there for you. And because you didn't believe my, my, my rage and my anger, because I have given you my love. And that's why God sent Jesus down to redeem us back to himself. He won't do that. That's why he destroyed the earth, because he was so frustrated at man's unbelief. But when Jesus came, man, I thank God that he has redeemed us back. And he sent grace and mercy upon us to give us the opportunity to recognize we may be reaching for something that we don't need, but God wants us back and wants us to give, give us some reminders. And Jude saying, let me remind you about the children of Israel. They've walked away and forgotten about what I've done for them. The angels, he said, let me remind you about the angels in verse number six. And if you want to want another read this week, Ezekiel uh, chapter 28 and Isaiah chapter 14, it talks about how the angels got kicked out of heaven. A third of the angels and, and they followed a prideful Lucifer. Remember, we talked about pride divides a community, but love provides a community. And this is where we're at. We are in a, we were in a, we're in a community of love. And the scripture says, he has kept these in darkness that did not dwell with the father. And they got kicked out out of pride. He says, he's kept them in darkness. You know what that is? The shadowy places. He said, I've bound them in chains. Hell was created just for them, not for you. He said, I bound them in chains. And I can tell you, I know a lot of people that have abandoned, the Bible says they abandoned their orig original dwelling place. God wants you to find a secret place, a dwelling place in his love. They abandoned their dwelling place. And it says they're kept in darkness and bound and chains. And the father says, I want you back. That's why I sent Jesus so that you'll come back to me. And if you are near the father, you won't be lost. I can't help but think when I read that scripture, that song, we sing, my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior's ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Oh, is that awesome? We don't have to be bound in chains. We don't have to be in darkness. God loves us that much. Then the third group of people were those of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, the, and it says the surrounding towns in verse 7. And what, it, what the Bible says is they, they gave themselves up to sin. They gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. And really what that means is this group became desensitized to the sin that was happening around them. And when we're out of love with God, we become desensitized that things can be happening around us or things can be happening in our own house. Things can be happening in our own lives. And we just kind of chuck it off like we don't even care. We become desensitized to our morals. We become desensitized to our principles desensitized to our faith. And all of these were dark moments for these people and in dark places for people who had at one time known God's love, but God made a choice to walk away from the Father. You know, there's a, A.W. A. Tozer said, the essence of sin is rebellion against divine authority. And sometimes when we realize that God is in authority over us, we have to run to him. I need God's divine authority and God's love that exists in my life. We don't get it all proper. We don't get it all right. But God wants us to come to him. Now, I, I want to go to my third point. So number one, keeping God's love. Number two, build yourself up in God's love. And then number three, um, return the love back to God. So, so in this moment, I, I realize the sun's there. I can get there. In this moment, I realize there can be some harsh reminders that cause me 
to change some things about myself so that I, I am walking toward and building myself up in God. I don't have to be perfect. And I don't have to judge people who are imperfect. Let, let me read a couple of passages. I'm going I'm to flip back here, guys. I, mi- I didn't miss these. I wanted to save them for here. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. I want you to hear this because this is language that we want to make sure to keep in our community. Galatians 6 and 1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 3 in the New Living Translation, it says, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own eye? Hey, come on, let's get better at this, okay? Let's get better at welcoming, welcoming people into the community of faith because we're returning love back to God by loving what he loves and he loves people. Oh my goodness. I, I don't have the right to look at somebody and judge them. I don't have a right to complain about a speck in someone's eyes, what the scripture says, when I got a log in my own. I don't, I don't get that right or that privilege. The Bible says, judge not lest you be judged. Man, I, I gotta just, I gotta watch out for myself. But then at the same time, I gotta love so hard and so unconditionally. I'm gonna go back to last week's sermon that people can even feel the image of Christ in me because I love him so much. Let's return the love to God. He's done that much for us. All I got to do is return the love by, back to him by loving what he loves. That's mankind. That's people he doesn't want to see. It's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and know him. So I want to return the love. How do I return the love? You know, I'll, I'll read Jude uh, verses 20 and 21 one more time. And it tells us, it says, but you, beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Build yourself up. You pray. You be watchful. You know what I love about this? These are action words. And love expressed is an action. So I'm going to return, I'm going to return some love back to God. I'm going to return some love by, by teaching others on some areas that I failed. I, I love some of our life groups right now because I, I watched people get into life groups initially over the last year or so and just begin to grow. And now I'm watching them teach. And, and we just say, say what you know. Here, here's, here's our book and our curriculum. And, and, and we want everybody to continue to learn the word of God. But, but our life groups, are, we just call them free market. We're, we're all in this thing together. If we don't have an answer, then we'll find you an answer out of the word of God. And I'm watching people teach. That's a way to express love back. Help us remind other people about some of the mistakes that you made and kind of distract them from going that way. I, I love that. Here's some other ways that we can be active and return the love back to God. Be faithful. That's a way to return the love. Set aside time for God. We've obviously proven that faithfulness is not just attending a physical church campus, but faithfulness is a time with God. God, this is, this is what I'm going to set aside to have communion with you, to talk with you, to feel your love. Not get so busy where I can't love you in return and you can love me. Serving is a way to return the love. Loving others, lifting others up, loving the vision and the mission of, of the house of God, our church and its purpose here in Concord and Contra Costa. Um, impacting people's lives, coming to growth track, find a place to join the team, help us serve in our community. And man, I, I just love what our church is doing right now to bless those on the front line, give away groceries. We're just always looking, how can we help? How can we help? Because we're doing what we, we know to do and that's serve. Serving is a way to return the love. And then looking is a way to return the love. L- looking for me is just watchful, being alert, it helps me stay sensitive and not become desensitized. If I'm desensitized, I'm, I just got my head down and I'm just, I don't care about anything else, but I've got my head up. I'm looking. So that's a way to return love and so look for mercy. Look for grace. Look for opportunity. One of my favorite passages, 2 Timothy 4, 5, it, it starts out with be watchful in all, in all things or be alert, endure hardship. It says do the work of an evangelist. Not be an evangelist, but do the work of an evangelist telling people about Jesus. I love the passage. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're looking to the cross, the ultimate sign of God's love, the ultimate symbol of God's love. It's irresistible. 
And I need that in my life. Prayer, it says prayer is a way to return God's love. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Let the comforter surround you. Let him give you comfort and continue to pray. Prayer, I, I, I think we referenced this not long back. Corey Tim Boom said prayer should be your steering wheel and not your spare tire. Make prayer. We've been praying 714. Every morning, every evening. We sometimes do it on a prayer walk. And if you're like, well, 714 is so hard. Pick a time in the day. But just create a method and a way so that you can talk to God. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of close with this. I want to share this story with you about God's love. I, I, I witnessed it Thursday. Pastor Rob and I, and we, uh, uh, our, our leader of our prison ministries, Richard Banuelos, and Courtney led worship in a, um, for a correctional facility in Idaho. And um, we do that here in our church, and it's just something that God has brought to life, and it has been amazing to be there. And we're stretching ourselves into juvenile centers right now, and, and we want to do that. That's our dreams, and we've got connections to do that. So we love that because we love what God loves. That's people. But, man, Thursday night, I got so overwhelmed, I just sat at my table and I cried. And there's a, there's a placard by our table that talks about being gathered around the table in love. And while I was there, I was online and Courtney, um, our daughter, was leading worship. And, and she's singing, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. So she led these room full of men in worship. And then Richard came on and gave his testimony about who he was before Jesus and who he became after Christ. Then Pastor Rob, he got on, and I mean, he spoke a, a message about the love of God, and he told his story and about his brother who was in prison and how we can still know and love God and how he understood and found Christ in the latter years, spent most all of his life in prison. And I mean, these guys are sitting there telling their story, and all of a sudden, Pastor Rob's like, Guys, we're getting ready to go, but who wants to know Jesus today? Who wants to know who God is? And man, he looked in the back and he said, you two back there, I saw you raise your hand. And I mean, this is over a, this is over a Zoom call. And he points to those. He said, I want you two to stand up. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad that, that they can do that. I'm, like, I'm texting them and telling them afterward when we met. I'm like, I could never do that. But they could because they've been there. They understand how deep God's love is for them. I understand God's love and what he's done for me. And I'm just sitting there crying because these two guys that have never known Christ received him for the first time into their life Thursday night on a Zoom call in another state. Can we give God praise for that, church? Come on, all over this place, wherever you're at, around the world, around the U.S., right here in our own county, right here in our own state. That's what it's all about. What happened in that prayer with those gentlemen, it is just absolutely amazing what God has done by showing love. Even to them, I'm sitting at the table with the, some, what some people would call the outcast or, or can't be repaired. Reputations can't be recovered. Not true. Jesus said he loved us so much. God sent his son Jesus. He loved us so much. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all. He didn't say all who were out of prison. He said all, wherever you may be, and that's you today. We took the opportunity. We didn't catch a video of it, but we took an opportunity, and we recorded the prayer that Pastor Rob prayed over these guys, and we set it to the video of the testimonies you've been hearing all month long. And as we conclude this service today, we want you to hear that prayer and just recall the videos of the testimonies that you've heard throughout the month and how they've changed our lives, how God's changed their lives and transformed us all. Watch this with us as we close. Listen to me. God's calling you to be a witness for him. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says this, that the, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be a witness into Jerusalem, and, he will, and unto Judea and Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. I'm going to close right now. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 says this, The Son of Man manifested himself to do what? To come destroy the works of the enemy. I want to close with this. 
Are you ready? Has Jesus come? You witnessed him already. You recognize the word. You came and you worshiped. But now it's time to be a witness. Are you ready? If some of you are, that's cool that you're a witness for the kingdom already. But some of you may not be witness for the kingdom right now. You have more inside of you. You want more of God and he wants to work inside of you. Are you willing today to come with the right posture before him, the right heart, and submit your life to him again? Recommit your life to him. Are you ready to do that this, this, this evening? I believe that man, life changed. Because when he went to Decapolis, not only the whole city got saved, the scripture said, uh, uh, it was also said that the cities around that city, people got saved because of that one man. who was a mad man who surrendered his life and gave it up to God. God used him to minister to the many and more. What an irresistible God that he would seek us because he loved us. And as he loved us, he shows us a plan. And that plan is to prosper us, not to harm us, but give us hope in the future. Pastor Rob said it. Pastor Rob said it. What an irresistible God that he would love us like that. Wow. He said, are you ready? Are you ready today? Because I mean, I do it on a daily basis. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. Amen. Your father loved you that much. Are you ready? Okay, you've left. Okay, you feel lower than you've ever felt. Okay, there are some things you are dealing with. Flaws, deep issues, wounds, complete failures, complete meltdowns. Imagine coming to yourself and realizing that you can go back to a father's love that is without conditions. You don't have to get it right before you go back. You can come to the sunshine and out of the darkness. You made a wrong turn and bad decisions, but turn around. The Father's right there to give you guidance. He's right there to start pointing you in the right direction. He's waiting for you. We're here for you. We want you to know Jesus today. We're going to say a prayer, and then I'm going to tell you about a resource that will help you on this journey as we conclude. Would you stand with me, pastors and team here in the building? Would you stand with me in your house today, your sanctuary, and would you pray this prayer with me? Repeat after me. Father, I know you love me. I receive your love today. I receive your mercy, and I receive your grace. I have not gone too far. I'm going to say that again. I have not gone too far from your love. So let me come back. Forgive me for leaving the shelter of your love. Forgive me, Father, of my sins and make me new. Set me on the right path. Give me new direction. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that I can be saved here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, that was the exact prayer Pastor Rob prayed for those two guys. I had my phone up there. We were recording it over a computer. I know it was broken, but how cool was that? That prayer, those guys got saved. This prayer, you know a new and a loving father. Can we give God some praise for that church? <laughs> Hallelujah. You're part of 75 people that have raised their hands and contacted us since we've started our online services. Wow. 
Praise God. Let's keep it rolling. When they do hit us, you can hit us at info at newhopepeople.com or you can get on and hit that digital connect card to know Jesus Christ, that raising of hands. Just hit that. And when you let us know, we want to send you some resource. We want to give you a Bible. And there's a book that we've been giving out for the last year and a half. We've given over 500 of these away. That's how many people have come to know the Lord. And it just says, start to follow. How to be a successful follower of Jesus. We don't want you to feel ill-equipped. We want to send you a checkoff list to help get you moving in the right direction. We love you. We care for you. If not here, somewhere, just get to a place where they can love you and know Jesus today. Let us know if we can send you a Start to Follow bundle. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget about our kids' service tonight at 5 o'clock for all of our littles. Thank you to all of our team who are online all week long, encouraging you, strengthening you, lifting you up. We say praise God for you. Have a great week. We love you. We'll see you next time here online at New Hope People. God bless. Again, thank you so much for joining us online today. We hope you enjoyed the worship in the word. And if you accepted Christ for the first time today, we are so excited for you. We want to provide some next steps for you. So email us at info at newhopepeople.com. And if you have any prayer requests, again, use that email and let us know. Have a blessed week and we'll see you next week at 1015.